Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Hope everything is fine wherever you are. This is uh, Grandmaster's Choice. Welcome to this lecture. Um, what are we gonna do today? Well, I'm gonna show you the best king match ever in chess history. One of my favorite games. This happened between Short, Nigel Short, great player from England. He actually uh, fought for the World Championship title and uh, this game, he was facing Jean Timan. And I think this game happened in the Netherlands, in some city called Tilburg. It's a small, a small city in the, in the south of uh, the Netherlands. So, see already a lot of people in the chat. So, uh, as usual, uh, you guys can give me some suggestions. I'll be asking you some questions. This way, the lecture will be more interactive. All right? And uh, after this class, uh, we're gonna we're gonna show uh, one of the games um, from the U.S. Championship, one of the most important games actually, because uh, it corresponds to the last round, well, the ninth round, and uh, it happened between Wesley So and Jefferson. So we'll be here for a couple of hours. I um, hope you guys enjoy uh, this lecture. Okay, so let's uh, let's start. So Nigel Short decided to play e4. Um, black plays knight f6, the alakin, the alakin defense, right? So basically, uh, black is conceding the center because after e5, black is gonna have to move the knights like two or three times in the opening. And uh, something very difficult to explain for beginners, right? Because we always tell them like uh, they should only move uh, minor pieces once in the opening, right? So uh, this is hyper modern chess. Basically, uh, you can see the center, then you strike in the center, and then you put pressure on the center with uh, pawns uh, later or bishops uh, from far away, right? So, for example, the groom frail is also a hyper modern opening, right? And uh, stuff like that. Yeah, no, it's not the French game. So e5 here. Of course, you can play knight c3, but the main line is e5. I mean, we can gain more space in the center and then uh, kick this knight from s6 why not to go for for e5 right so here knight d5 of course this is the bet square for the knight don't go to g8 or h5 or g4 of course you just blunder the knight but knight d5 and the knight comes to the center so here d4 i also like this move knight c3 i have employed myself this move in a couple of uh, classical chess games the idea is that after knight takes c3, you want to recapture with this uh, d pawn, and then in the future, you want to go even long castle. So it's a, a pretty aggressive line against the Alakine. So, what's up, Jose Luis Gaston, Gascon, Juan David, Prince of Darkness? Hope everything is fine. Okay, so d4 here, and now black uh, strikes in the center with d6. And here Nigel Short went for knight f3. Of course, maybe the most natural move is c4, and this is actually the main line. And after knight b6, you can take her d6, or you can go for the four pawns attack, which is a very aggressive response against the, the Alakine, right? Basically, after black uh, takes an e5, you want to capture, of course, with the f pawn, because if you capture with the d pawn, then queen takes e1, and actually black is much better. But the idea is just to, you know, to play knight f3, knight c3, bishop e3, and, um, you know, it's a pretty, uh, you know, interesting way to reply against the Alakine. All right, so, mm, knight f3, and black here went for g6. Uh, going for the Fianchetto system, black wants to go short castle in this position with the bishop on g7, and then again, putting pressure on e5. Black uh, can also try this d takes e5, and then white's idea is not to capture with the d pawn, but instead knight takes e5. And then I want to ask you guys, um, what happens if black goes knight d7 in this position? Because it looks natural, right? You want to kick this knight from e5? I mean, probably the, 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 the main move in this position is just e6, but I want to ask you guys what happens if uh, black plays knight d7. Would you take on d7? Would you go back to f3? And then try to go c4, or what's your move here in this position? We are warming up, we are warming, yeah, warming up, sorry. That's right, so knight f7 here just wins the game, because after king takes f7, queen h5, the king is forced to go to e6, you know, he's dancing salsa in the middle of the war, it's not <laughs> a very good idea, and now... I don't know, there are many interesting ways here uh, to play with the white pieces. For example, the first move that comes to my mind 
is uh, C4, right? Because now, you know, mm, you can't actually, I mean, you can't play something like knight d6, d5, and then this king is going to d6, and then, I don't know, there are so many ways here to finish the game, right? So, so knight d7 is not a good move in this position. Okay, let's go back to the game. Black continued with g6, and now uh, white played bishop c4, attacking this knight on d5, and then the weakest uh, square uh, on, the, on the king side is actually f7, right? So that's why the bishop on c4 is fantastically placed. So black went knight b6 in this position, and then bishop b3. Bishop f7 is not working in this position, because after knight takes f7, knight g5, Black can play something like king g8, and then after queen f3, which is actually a threatening checkmate, in one move on f7, black can just play king e8, and then it covers the f7 square, right? So there's no problem for black here. Then at the end of the day, you're going to kick this knight from g5, and then black is, is going to be extremely happy in this position with a piece up. So that's why after knight b6, white win bishop b3. I mean... It's not a very good idea just to go to e2 or something. The bishop is much better placed on this diagonal, as, as, as we said, right? Okay. So, greetings from Astana. What's up, Blue? Everything fine? So, bishop b3 and now bishop g7. And what do you think is black's threat right now? So, for example, what happens if I just play h3 in this position? Which is maybe a natural move to, to our eyes because uh, bishop g4 could be... An option for black just pinning the knight on f3, putting a lot of pressure on the knight on f3, but actually h3 is not a very good move in this position. What do you play here with the black pieces? So guys, we are again in another lockdown in Spain. Well, it changes from region to region, but now, uh, for example, in the place where I am, which is Ibiza, it's an island in the Balearic Islands. So you can't go out between the... 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So, you know, it's crazy everywhere nowadays, right? So, what do you play with the black pieces? Come on. Prasanna. Give me your move. Give me your candidate's move. D takes e5, right? This is the... Yeah, that's right. This is the best move here in the position because if now white takes with the knight, actually, you can even take on e5. And then queen takes d1, and then this looks perfectly fine for black, yeah? You're gonna put pressure on the e5 pawn with knight c6, sorry, not knight c5, not even superman can, do can go there. Knight c6, and then bishop f5, then long castle, and then this king is gonna suffer a little bit, right? And it's even worse if you take with the pawn on, the, on, the, on e5, because now after queen takes d1, I mean, black didn't even have to give up the bishop first, so basically... Uh, Black is fine in this position, right? Well, black is actually better. So, um, yeah, black wants to be in the end game with, in these types of positions, but I don't see uh, winning material. That's right, of course. I mean, it's uh, I mean we are in, in move number seven. Yeah, if black is winning material, then white uh, should have done something really, really bad. So that's why. How do we stop this? Well, there are different ways. For example, short castle. And in the game, Niger Short played Queen E2. But I want to ask you one question. So now, is it possible to go Bishop G4 in this position? I mean, in this kind of uh, hypermodern uh, openings, uh, as I told you, you uh, concede the center, but then you put a lot of pressure on the center with moves like Bishop G G7, Knight C6, Bishop G4. But then, what happens if Black plays Bishop G4 in this position? That's right, so forcing moves all the time. You should uh, be paying attention to forcing moves. And uh, after bishop g4, bishop f7 is actually winning. This is a very well-known trick in this position, right? Because now bishop f7, king f7, and now knight g5 check, and then uh, this bishop on g4 is actually unprotected, and then white is completely winning in this position. We're just a pawn up, then the light squares are extremely weak, so life is great, right? Okay, so that's why, I mean, I want to explain you uh, by basically every move. So every move, there's a reason behind every move in the opening, right? So that's why I think, you know, uh, we can learn a lot for trying to, to, to see uh, why these players went for this move or this move in the opening and not just go like, first 50 moves, we don't explain anything because it's just theory, yeah? So the theory, there's a reason behind every move in theory, right? So... 
uh, our man um, YM is saying you can even play E6 first, loss, uh, low. So after Bishop G4, E6. Well, I'm not so sure because now F takes E6, and I mean you are not winning any pawn, right, in this position. Well, I think White is better, but uh, I mean you don't win any material. But okay, so short castle in this position. So now Black is covering F7, and therefore. Uh, well, uh, one of black ideas could be play bishop g4 in the next move. Actually, Nigel Short didn't stop this. Well, uh, sorry, queen e2. Knight c6 was the John Tima move, not Short Castle. And then here, Short Castle from uh, Nigel Short. Again, if bishop g4, then we have the same trick in, the, in this position. So bishop f7, sorry, is a, a nice trick, and then knight g5. So that's why in this position, black went for short castle. And now you're going to tell me one move for white in this position. What do we play now? Because now after short castle, black is actually able to play bishop g4. So somebody is saying queen e4. Well, I like this attacking idea as you want to uh, regroup the queen, bring the queen to h4, but... I don't think this is the best uh, way to play because, you know, first you should continue development. This is a very, uh, you know, usual thing to do. Like you first develop minor pieces and then try to attack. This is too direct, I would say. For example, bishop f5 here, queen h4. Probably this is your plan. And then I guess I can take on e5 even. And then actually this pawn is just hanging. So there's too much pressure on e5 and d4, so that's why you first uh, have to develop some pieces, right? Knight d2, connect the knights, that's a very mm, nice idea, but I guess now bishop g4 is pretty annoying. Well, maybe not so annoying because I can just go queen e3, but I think the, 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 the pieces in, in this way are not very well coordinated, so... Yeah, bishop f4, also an interesting idea, but I guess... You know, I can try to do the same stuff with bishop g4 and actually I'm threatening to take on f3 and then on e5. So, what do we play? h3. Yeah, that's right. This is the move that Nigel Short went for. So, this is the most natural move in this position. We cover g4 and then we forget about this bishop on c8. And actually, the bishop on c8 uh, doesn't have too many good squares. Connect the knights. Connect the... <laughs> yeah, connect the knights. <laughs> Yeah, somebody is saying, can we go for e6 in this position? Well, I'm not so sure. I think black can uh, react in several ways in this position, but I like d5 now. Because now, if you take on f7, I just take with the rook, and uh, I'm uh, putting pressure on d4, and then if you protect d4 right now, then bishop g4 comes uh, with real pressure against the knight on f3. Actually, you're striking with e4 in, 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 in the next move, right? And then the bishop is... Uh, it's not doing anything with this pawn on g5. So that's why I think e6 could be very tempting, right? But uh, I, would, uh, I, I wouldn't I would go for this, you know? One has to be extremely sure before going e6 in this kind of positions, yeah? So d5, and I think black's better. So... Mm, Bishop f4 attempted to defend e5, though. Bishop f4, Bishop g5... Rookie one looks nasty, but he, he, he finds defended. Yeah, bishop f4 it's a natural move, but I guess bishop g4 is again pretty pretty annoying, right? Because you are aiming to take on e5, then on f3, and then e5 could be hanging. So that's why h3 first, and then you forget about this uh, c8 bishop, and then you can continue developing your pieces, as you said, with bishop f4, then knight c3 or knight d2. And at this point, Jan Timang went for a5, which is, to, you know, the, the, the threat is very trivial. Actually, black wants to trap this bishop, so how can we react against this a5 move? And there are actually two different ways, or even four ways to react against a a5. Then I, I want to ask you, what move would you play in this position? And there are actually subtle differences that I want to point out in, at this moment. So a4, a4 is an option. A4 is an option. It has the drawback that some point B4 could be weak, but it's not really true because uh, we can get this knight uh, by playing C3. I will go C3. Uh, Prince of Darkness is saying. So basically, there. I mean, there are four options. Yeah, we go knight C3. We go A3. Well, knight C3 is not even possible, right? Because of A4. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So now um, White has to go bishop C4, and then you just grab the bishop, and then you get the bishop. Bird life is great again. So. 
basically three options or even four yeah you can play c4 c3 a3 and a4 so for example if you play c3 i guess now i can just take on e5 and then play something like b a4 or even bishop f5 looks good followed by a4 so not so sure about this c3 but it's not the big mistake or anything but you know after a4 this bishop is forced to go uh, from this diagonal you know and this diagonal was the best diagonal so the idea is to keep that bishop just uh, attacking f7 right and from c2 is basically doing not so much i mean now i can just centralize my queen for example and after rook d1 probably i can just go to e6 i don't know but i just don't like c3 in this position now i want to ask you what do you play a3 or a4 and yeah c4 i mean doesn't look very good right because now i mean you blocked your own diagonal so basically yeah this is not very good so a3 or a4 well i want to try to explain you the differences between the two moves and it's actually very subtle it's not easy at all so the best move is a4 but i want to uh, explain you why so a3 now black plays a4 d takes uh, sorry bishop a2 d takes e5 d takes e5 now whenever you're suffering from lack of space it's interesting to exchange some minor pieces so for example knight d4 makes a lot of sense in this position because now after knight takes d4 queen takes d4 now black managed to uh to to exchange a, a pair of knights which is better for black uh, as i told you and now you're putting pressure on e5 and it's gonna be tough for uh, white to protect the e pawn because now there is a fantastic move in this position mm. so what do you play with black right now actually a3 is a little bit worse than a4 and there is a precise move right now that explains everything come on guys try to be creative in this position it's not a very common move that you see in the middle games so what do we play here by the way guys are you following the the us champion you can follow here in the in the in the channel with fantastic commentary from jennifer shahade yasser serwan and maurice ashley rook d8 well rook d8 i mean i'm not so sure i just played knight c3 for example and then I can try some e6. Yeah, rook a5. That's right, Ernst. Rook a5. And then there is a lot of pressure on e5. Basically, I don't say a way to protect this uh, pawn on e5. Sorry, guys. <laughs> My flip-flop just uh, escaped. So now I guess the only move is e6. But even uh, after taking on e6, bishop takes e6. Even f takes e6. This looks very good for black because if you take on e6, I just go king h8 and then f2 is under attack. You cannot develop easily with bishop e3 because the b2 pawn is just hanging. Then this rook is joining the party. You can even double rooks on the f5. So, yeah, so I wouldn't go for a3, but the reason is this rook a5, which is uh, very, very interesting. Now I think my software collapsed a little bit, which is not very good news. For us <laughs> let's see what i can do here you know this happens from time to time okay now it's working so a3 not the best move in this position because of this line but instead nigel sharp went for a4 he forgets about these a4 ideas for black no rook a5 anymore and then the bishop on this on b3 is fantastically placed and then b4 is not weak because our pawn still on c2 right Okay, guys, so at this, uh, at this moment, black went, d takes e5, d takes e5, and then what would you play here with the black pieces? Well, you have different options. The problem is this guy on c8. I mean, you never go uh, bishop e6, right, because you ruined your pawn structure. So on d7, it's not so well placed. On f5, there, there are always g4 ideas in this position. I mean, not now, but for example, knight c3, you continue development with bishop f4, rook a d1, and then you see that black has real troubles, uh, I mean, if we talk about space. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so 
what do we play here with black pieces? I mean, not an easy position, right? So, for example, e6 looks natural because, I mean, you protect this diagonal, but at the same time, you weaken the dark squares. So, Jan Timan went for this, uh, for this move, knight d4. Same idea as we just saw before. So, the idea is to exchange a pair of knights and then put some pressure on e5. So, white is forced to take on d4. Queen takes d4. And now, basically, the only move to protect the e5 pawn is rook e1. Again, if you go e6 in this position, I guess black can just take on e6 and then we're same kind of position that we just analyze. So queen e6, king h8, and then you take on e7, I guess black has full compensation for the, for the pawn. And after queen c7, what do you play here with black? Can white take on c7? King h8. Well, now we'll analyze king h8. But I mean, the, here there are some tactic, uh, tactical problems, yeah? Rook e1, that's a good move. Also, rook takes f2, looks very nice as well. Rook f2, rook takes, rook e1, king h1, and now, now what? Not, not queen f2, well, I mean, probably it's winning too, but just bishop e5 and then we just grab the queen, right? So rook e1, rook f2, both, both moves work. So this is why uh, e6, again, it's not a very good move and then the bishop on g7 is well restricted with this pawn on e5 so if we manage to keep this pawn on e5 and then we manage to develop all our queen side we could be much better in this position because the bishop on g7 is not working the, our bishop on b3 is a very good piece yeah so rookie one this is what uh, white played in this position and now again it's not an easy position for black because uh, you cannot put more pressure on e5. The only move to put pressure is knight d7. And now, of course, e6 makes much more sense. And, uh, yeah, what do we play? Bishop f5. Uh, bishop f5. I mean, just, uh, for example, knight d3 to go knight f3. And then bishop f4. In the game, Jan Timan went for e6. Which is compromising a little bit the position. Because now this bishop is... Uh, it's not gonna be active anymore and then black will try to to put this bishop probably in this diagonal a8 h1 and still doesn't know how probably maybe bishop d7 and bishop c6 or in the future some b6 followed by bishop b7 what do you think of uh, hikaru performance in the current u.s championship i think nobody expected this right because i mean hikaru has been playing so well in in the last online tournaments you know uh, before all this pandemic, I mean, it looked like he was not in his best shape. I mean, in classical tournaments. So, but in online chess, it looks like he was the only player available to 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 fight against Magnus, right? And uh, this is actually what happened in the Sun uh, Magnus Tour tournaments. And uh, I remember some epic final between uh, Ikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen. I think uh, they finished 4-3. I mean, four matches uh, won my Magnus and three matches won my Hikaru. It was just a fantastic uh, show, you know. But uh, I didn't expect this, of course. And I'm also very impressed by uh, Wesley Saul's performance. You know, he makes, uh, he makes look to, uh, to play so easy. So definitely carry with four out of nine, it's not a very common thing. But okay. So e6 and now it's white to move in this position. Come on guys, give me some move. What would you play here in this position? You wanna play c3, you wanna develop these pieces. I don't know, bishop g5, knight c3, or knight d2. What's your favorite move in this position? Until tell me why. That was an epic match. Do you think it's just a bad tournament for Naka then? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Naka is super strong in online, in, in Rapid and, uh, I mean, in, in everything, yeah? But uh, we talk about Rapid and Blitz chess and online probably is just uh, the best after Magnus. At least in my opinion. But we'll see. Knight a3. Well, I don't like this move, knight a3. Knight a3. Yeah, you want to go to b5, I guess? I can just uh, develop my bishop to d7 after knight d5, I guess. I can just go queen c5. And then again, it's not easy for you to play bishop b3. But definitely an interesting idea. But this could solve uh, black's trouble. Because at some point, black can just take on b5. And again, black's suffering from lack of space. So I think uh, to trade pieces is not a very good idea, right? 
knight c3, knight a3. Well, I think the most natural move here is, is just knight d2. This is what Niger Shot did because you want to put this knight on f3 and then just win a tempo. I also like knight c3. Knight a3 is very interesting. But uh, knight d2 makes a lot of sense too, right? The knight comes to f3, we protect, we super protect e5, and then we are ready to develop finally the c1 bishop. So here, black went knight d5, and I understand Jan Steeman's idea. He wants to go b6 and uh, bishop b7. If black manages to go like this, then his position will be completely fine. And then one important thing to remark is that after moves like c4, then b4 is actually a uh, way squared. So that's why the knight on d5 is kind of well played. And what's up, Sidant? <laughs> and here, yeah, next move is pretty obvious for all of us, which is knight f3. And here, black went queen c5. Okay, so we have developed the knight from b1 to f3, which is a clear improvement in our position. And now it's time to build our attack because we have like, have you read the book from uh, Vladimir Vukovic, The Art of Attack? It's a very nice book. It's uh, actually one of the Bibles uh, of attacking chess. And he says, uh, you should have some preconditions before you start an attack. Here we fulfill the preconditions, I would say, because uh, we have a nice uh, pawn on e5, which is... Uh, well, uh, supporting uh, f6 and also avoiding some uh, kingscapes in the future. And uh, we, have, we have more space and it's not clear how black is going to create counterplay on the center or on the king side. So that's why we are in good shape to start an attack on the king side. Yeah, so bring the pieces. Uh, yeah, all your pieces are developed being one of the conditions that Patrick Daly, Daly say. And, uh, you know, black has also some weaknesses, which are the dark squares. And then we think, okay, Pepe, so what do we do? Well, if we manage to trade these two guys, this will be fantastic for us because the dark squares will be extremely weak, right? So, yeah, that's a good diagonal for the bishop. The a1 rook is not playing yet, but it will be. So basically, I mean... Whenever I see this position, I think I want to eliminate these two bishops. The bishop on g7 and the bishop on c1, right? So, then what do we do? h4, h5 idea. Yeah, I mean, that idea is always interesting, but mainly when, when there is a rook on h1. With the king on g1, I mean, I'm not sure if that helps too much your attack, h4, h5. Because after h6, black just retreats the bishop to h8. And... Uh, with the rook on h1, sorry, on h1 makes a lot of sense. This is actually one of the techniques in the attack. You open the h file and then, you know, you attack with your heavy pieces, long, long range attack pieces, the queens and the rook. Yeah, so bishop g5, that's uh, definitely an option, right? But the thing is, after h6, I don't know where you're going with the bishop. Well, probably bishop d2. So bishop g5 is, yes, a natural move. But I like the move that uh, Nigel Short did. He went for queen e4, as uh, Mr. School is saying, centralizing the queen and maybe moving towards the king's side later on. Yes, exactly. So, queen e4, the idea is rather simple. You want to continue with bishop h4 and then bishop h6, just eliminating the fee and care bishop, which is uh, uh, a monster, right? Okay, so here, Jan Timan goes for queen b4. Of course, his idea is to trade queens. What should we do in this position? Should we trade queens? No, don't trade queens in this position because, I mean, we are trying to attack, right? So we should keep uh, the queens in the board. So how do we play right now? How do we play? No trading. That's right. Knight d4, one of your ideas. You know, and whenever I see so many pieces like kind of unprotected, uh, unprotected, sorry, I get really scared. <laughs> but it's an option. It's an option. But I think you don't stop trading. You don't avoid trading with this move because I got c5 right here. And uh, knight b5, queen takes c4, employed it. That's close, uh, that's close to a balanced position, right? Mm, c4 
c4 is actually not possible because queen takes b3. I mean, the first move that comes to our mind is bishop takes b5, just winning a pawn, right? I mean, we didn't talk about this move. But I think it's not, you know, the best choice in this position because after e takes d5, queen takes d5, this bishop goes back to life and now black has those one those one uh, i mean black has one of those positions where he's enjoying the bishop pair and then therefore he's got some compensation after bishop b6 his bishops are very good so that's why i wouldn't go for a bishop d5 yeah yeah c4 is not possible because you drop the bishop on b3 so we eliminate that uh, option so we don't have too many options again so i mean we can play queen e2 which is a very decent move you want to later continue with bishop d2 and then kick the queen from there maybe then going back to e4 but the move from Nigel short is bishop c4 which could look very strange because now after knight b6 we have to reinforce with b3 otherwise again black is managing to trade queens but then we have to realize that our bishop on c1 can also join the party via a3 and now Black has this rook on f8 and the queen on b4, and then this way, the bishop on a3 is actually creating a lot of troubles. So bishop c4 was played by Nigel Short, now knight b6 from Tima. Well, now we are forced actually to play b3, otherwise after bishop f1 or something like this, we just do, did something very stupid. Now queen takes e4. And I even prefer black in this position. I just go bishop d7, bishop c6, put pressure on a4. And black has nothing to worry about in this position. Yeah, deep. I wouldn't have spotted bishop c4 because of principles. You're right, Patrick. It's not a very common move. But it's very interesting. Because now, after b3, I mean, the bishop is coming to a3. So black is going to have to waste more tempi stopping this, this kind of ideas. So now, of course, black took on c4. How do we recapture on c4? I mean, I, if I see somebody saying I take with the queen, I just, I just close this class. Queen takes c4. We deserve to go to prison. It would take on c4 with the, with the queen, yeah? Now, black would be much better because black has the bishop pair, a better structure, and black is more handsome. So b takes e4 and now it's a black turn. you're gonna give me a move in this position and then you have to stop bishop a3 so how do we do this how do we do this <coughs> by the way guys do you like soccer you know who is santiago solari he was a player from Real Madrid, and uh, he's actually an ambassador for Real Madrid Football Club right now, these days. He was actually the DT, the coach of Madrid, two years ago. And uh, we're uh, doing something with the, with the Real Madrid Foundation, some uh, charity chess event. And actually, I, <laughs> I was yesterday with Solari, and uh, he was uh, playing a game against Magnus Carlsen, blindfold. It was so, such a nice experience. Yeah, rook d8, rook e8. I think these are the two only options in this position, right? I mean, queen e7 again, bishop a3. So rook e8 was played by John Timan. Now, after bishop a3, you can't just go queen takes a4, probably because I don't see any discovery move that wins the game. So, yeah, rook e8, stopping bishop a3. And now, probably. Black's next move is bishop d7 in order to go bishop c6. So again, we have to think about prophylaxis. Also, b6 is an interesting move. So if we continue with the attack, let's say queen h4 in this position, which was our first idea, then black can play b6. And now if black goes, sorry, white goes bishop h6, which is part of our plan, then I think black can even take on h6 and then queen f8 come into defensive tasks and I think black's fine here because next move is bishop b7 you have a fantastic bishop the queen protects h7 in case of of need so I like black's position here so what do we play again bishop a3 queen takes a4 so I think it's just 
for now it's good to maintain the queen on e4 because it's actually stopping b6. Yeah, rook d1 for white. And Patrick says, that's why I wanted to go rook d8 in this position and then occupy the d5. The problem with rook d8 is that now bishop g5 comes with a tempo. And then there's not only the plan of going bishop a8, 6 but also the plan of going bishop f6 in this position and then try to do the same thing. Just eliminate this guy from g7 and then the dark squares will suffer a lot. So that's why maybe it's a little bit more natural rook e8 in this position, right? And uh, rook a3, very interesting move. We'll talk about that move later, yeah? Rook a3. But now I think black plays bishop d7. Because black is not only aiming to go b6 and bishop d7, but bishop d7. I would say if black brings the bishop to f to c6 to this diagonal, then black is fine. So how do we stop this prophylaxis? Prophylaxis. Yes, rook d1. That's right, so subendu. Rook d1. You stop rook d7, and then b6 is not possible right now. Okay, so queen c5 was played by Jean Tima. It's not easy to move here with the black pieces. And now, actually, the move that somebody suggested right there in the chat, that our friend the uh, school suggested, is very interesting. Rook a3. In order to go rook a to d3, and then it's not easy how black continues development. But instead, Nigel Shot said, you know what, I'm just going to go queen h4 in this position. Of course, his idea is just to go bishop h6. Now, basically, there is one only move for black in this position to improve its position. Do you see this move? So, how to play with black right now? Because now bishop d7 is not possible. I mean, yeah, b6, that's right. b6, the best move in the position. And now, you know, we have different options. For example, we can play bishop h6, which is part of the plan, but then we realize that, again, after the move, bishop h6, queen h6, now queen f8, this is a nice defensive resource. So how do we deflect the queen from the, from the f8 square? You see how many subtleties the game has, you know? It's actually very interesting to, to go deep in this game. I've seen this game analyzed in, uh, in other places, like they just take 10 minutes, you know, and then I couldn't understand because it's just so interesting. There are so many subtleties, you know, that's right. Yeah, h5 looks uh, sui suicidal, as you say, h5 in this position. Well, it's uh, actually, it's, 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 it's white turn, yeah? So bishop e3, that's right. Bishop a3 is also an idea, but now after queen c6, this bishop basically is doing nothing in this diagonal. I mean, I mean, we had the idea of trading these two guys. With From a3, is, this is just impossible. Well, you could try some bishop e7, but I just don't believe in that. It's too many tempi. So that's why bishop e3, you deflect the queen from f8, and now you are ready to go bishop h6 in the next move. In the game, black continued with queen c6. But if black just uh, plays something like queen e7, of course, we just trade, and then we bring the rook to the 8 file, Forcing bishop f8, and now bishop h6, this looks completely crashing. Well, you see the move here to win material? You want to go rook t1? What do you want to play here in this position after bishop b7? So, white move and win in this position. Rook a, d1. Well, rook a, d1 is not, it's actually a blunder. And I think black's better after this move. <laughs> rook e8. So no, there is a winning move here. Just much, much easier to spot, like forcing moves. Just compute all captures and then you'll realize how <laughs> we win in this position. Pretty easy. Come on guys, yeah, that's right, Mario. Mario! That's right, bishop f8, rook d8, the rook on e7 is just hanging. So, again, forcing moves all the time. I know, I insist on this every day, but this is the way to go. So, queen c6 and now bishop h6. And you see right now why he went, 
he didn't go bishop h6 straight away because queen f8 was a really nice resource. Of course, black cannot take right now on h6. If black takes on h6, queen takes h6, there's no way to stop knight g5 in the next move. Well, you could try something like bishop b7, saying, you know what, if you go knight g5, then I take on g2 with a checkmate. But I mean, there are so many uh, interesting ways to play here. I mean, the easiest one is just to play rook d4 with the idea of rook h4 in the next move, right? So that's why bishop h6 is not possible. I mean, whenever you are playing uh, with the fianchetto bishop, you should try to keep this bishop. So there is, again, only one more move for black in this position, which is, or even rook d5 could, could be working in that position. Not so sure. Rook d5 was working? Just, uh, I'm just curious right now. So queen c6, bishop here. And uh, bishop takes, queen takes, bishop b7, rook d5. Probably it's, probably it's working, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing, yeah. Queen d7. And then here I think the point is you don't take with a queen, but you take with a knight. And then knight of 6. All right. Pretty nice. So here, yeah, that's right. Tc, bishop h8. We keep the bishop. I mean, if the bishop is gone, then there's no way to protect that king, right? And now... This position is much better for for white, yeah? How? Bishop h8. I refuse to play bishop h8 on principle because every time I do, I lose. <laughs> yeah, but this, this uh, I mean, this was the only choice, yeah? In this position, and now, how do we proceed? With the white pieces. It's not clear, yeah? Probably you would love to go something like knight g5, but then after bishop b7, f3, I mean, something like queen c5, king h1, queen e5, and then you are not on time, actually, to create some troubles on h7. So knight g5, I would say, is, is not working. Okay, so here, Nigel Short went for rook d8, which makes a lot of sense, actually. Now, bishop b7, only move. You, you don't want to take on d8, of course, because there is checkmate, background problems. So, bishop b7, and now rook a to d1. Well, so oof, now black is in a really difficult situation. For example, if rook takes d8, rook takes d8, and let's say black plays bishop a6, saying, you know what, you cannot uh, actually make any progress. There is a killing blow here in this position for what? Come on, guys. Let's finish John Timon. Let's end this whole... Yeah, Queen E7. That's right. Great. So this is why Black played here Bishop G7. Going back, you know, now offering the trade of those bishops. And now my question is, would you take on G7? Would you play a different move? Queen e7 again. Well, queen e7. Queen e7. I just take on h6. And actually, the root on e8 is protected by these two pieces. And then you're attacking with two. So it's not working. And actually, <laughs> black is winning. So let's be really careful in this position. How should we proceed? Yeah, if you play bishop h8 and bishop g7, something's gone real wrong. I, I agree with you, Patrick. Bishop g7. Bishop g7 is actually a bad move. Not because of king, king takes e7, because now after queen f6, let's say king g8, you got rook d7, and then, you know, f7 is under attack, so basically only move is rook f8, and then boom, queen f7, followed by queen h7. But the point is, black doesn't play king g7. Black takes on d8 in this position, rook takes d8, Rook takes d8, and now king g7. The point is, after king f6, king g8, now you can't go rook d7. And probably you are a little bit better, but if you take on e8, then you lost uh, your advantage. And you go knight g5, there's made on g2. So it's not that clear. Probably you are still better after something like rook d4, but you lost actually uh, so much advantage in this position. So bishop g7, not the best move. Yeah, rook 1 to d7. Rook 1 to d7, I guess black just, you know, trace everything. Rook takes d8, 
Rook takes e8 and then bishop e8, 6 and actually black is winning because you have to take on e8 first, then queen h6, sorry, queen e8, queen h6, and now bishop takes f3, followed by queen takes a4, and then black is winning. So <laughs> still we have to be extremely careful in this position, very cautious. So what do we play then? I mean, we managed to play like Jin as well. We didn't play like Jin. It was Nigel shot, and now we want to ruin his position with only in two moves. King h2. This is very slow. This doesn't improve our position. And then, as I told you, black threat is to take on d8 and to take on, on h6. Yeah, that's right. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Suggested the best move. Rook a to d7. That's a very good move. Because now this rook on a8 is doing basically nothing. Mm. And white's threat is just to take on g7. And then play in queen f6 in this position, right? So, I mean, black is in a really difficult situation right now. And again, if black takes on h6 right now, then queen takes h6. And uh, let's say... Bishop c8, something like that. You can even take on f7, probably. King f7, and then knight g5, and then this is going to be checkmate pretty soon. So that's why Jan Timan played rook f8. And here, bishop takes g7 is, of course, now possible. King takes g7, second phase of the attack. You know, in this book, uh, Vladimir Bukovic's Bush, The Art of Attack, uh, he talks about uh, phases in the attack. The first phase is like uh, preconditions. The second phase is, uh, you know, uh, create weaknesses. In this case, we have created weaknesses by trading the fianke.bishop, and now f6 and h6 are extremely weak. And the third and last phase is uh, execution. Yeah. So, how do we continue? Well, now, Nigel Short has all the time in the wall, and he went for rook 1 to d4, which introduces uh, some attacking ideas, just lifting the, this rook to the king side, right, at some point. And actually, black cannot even move in this position. There is some sort of sutspan, because these rooks are not doing anything. This rook has to protect f7. If you move this rook, there is queen f6, followed by queen f7. So... Probably there is only one move that comes to your mind to kick this rook from d7. And this move is... This move is... What? Para pa 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 pere pere pe pe Yeah, bishop c8. I mean, at least to me, this is the first, move, uh, the first move that comes to my mind. Because this rook is extremely active on d7, then I just, I just want to kick this rook from d7, right? So bishop c8. But it's actually not possible because of queen f6, king g8, and now boom, rook f7. And you see, this rook is not working. Now after rook f7, black would love to have this bishop on b7. Now rook d8 is just made. So that's why in the game, Jan Tiemann went first for rook a to e8. Now he wants to continue with bishop c8 and then finally kick this rook. Because after bishop c8, now queen f6 followed by rook f7 doesn't work because now the rook on e8 is covering d8. Okay? So the game continued with queen f6, king, h, king g8, and now this game is so fantastic, even the engines... Uh, don't think that the move that Nigel Short played is a great move. But then after some uh, seconds thinking, it says it's just amazing idea. Now, there are different ways to play in this position. How would you continue? We have... Almost everything, yeah? All black pieces are extremely passive. Black is in a kind of Sutzban, this pretty weird German word, right? I lived uh, three years in Germany, actually working as a researcher in Hamburg University in the Applied Mathematics Department, and then I'm still not able to pronounce Sutzban correctly. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Kin H2, I mean, still maybe not the best idea. I mean, I also like Knight H4. Knight H4 looks good because now if black goes bishop c8, I think he can just take on g6. And then after pawn takes, rook h4 wins. And then let's say if black does nothing with bishop c8, you can play f3, something like this, and then you are threatening knight g6. Probably, probably this was also winning. But then Nigel Short starts with h4. Basically, his idea is just to go h5, h6, and checkmate. So the only way to stop this is to play h5, right? And now he starts with a, you know, cow move, which is king h2. That probably some of you would be thinking, okay, king h2 is just some sort of uh, pass move. And then uh, we're just thinking, okay, black to move. And then we'll see what he does because we have good pieces. But no, it's actually a part of a extremely dangerous plan for black. And this is why this game is so amazing. You will see in, in few moves. Now in bishop c8, this didn't happen in the game. Bishop c8, black loses. But there is only one good move here for white. Let's see if you guys are able to spot this move. <laughs> I'm sure you guys, like 50% 50, 50 of the people down there in the chat probably to, just saw the game before. But probably you didn't take, uh, you didn't pay much attention to all the mobs in the middle game and in the opening. So hopefully we will learn something today. Yeah. Yeah, but now very beautiful king h2. We want to bring the king to to h6. But now you want to go king g3 in this position? Are you sure? Hundred percent. You bet your house on this. Well, now you go king g3. I just take king f4. This is the idea that happened in the game. The king comes to h6. But now after, you know. For example, bishop c8, king g5, you just go king h7, and then you did something ridiculous. Right? So. I mean, this is just winning for, for, for black. So, we gotta do something against bishop c8. Rook d8, yeah, rook d8, again, rook d8, I just take on d8, and uh, I don't know, I just play bishop b7, and how do you continue? Rook f8, king f8, queen h8, king e7. I don't see any mating ideas down there, so no. We are again, we are again ruining the position. It's tough. It's a tough move to make now. Knight g5. You are right, Matan. Knight g5. Great move. And after bishop d7, rook f4. <laughs> and there's no way for black to stop knight f7. <laughs> and this is just uh, completely winning for white. Let's say queen c5. Knight f7, and then, for example, you go, let's say, king h7, you can play queen g5, and then queen h6 and queen h8 mate. So that's why knight f7, if black takes on f7 here in this position, you just take queen g6, and then you play g3, and then, if you don't believe me, you can trust the engines, this is completely winning for white. Let's say queen g7, queen h5, you go king g8, there is rook g4. You go king eight, queen h seven. You can even take and then play rook f seven, taking the bishop on d seven. All right, guys. So knight g five was winning. Maybe Timan saw this, and that's why he didn't went for he didn't go sorry for bishop c eight, but instead he went for rook c eight. And now we start our dangerous plan. This is, in my opinion, the best king march ever in chess history. King G3. Now probably John Timan realized, okay, now this this guy's coming to F4, G5, and H6, and there's no way to stop this because whenever the king goes to G5, and then Black tries to play King H7. This is a whole different story because we got a rook on the seventh rank, and F7 is going to be under attack. So Rook E8 now from John Timan, probably aiming to go Bishop C8 in the next move, but now King F4 is just completely winning. Finally, Timon tried to play bishop c8 and then king g5 and Jan Timon resigned. What's a pity, yeah? I would have loved to see bishop d7, king h6 in the board and then queen g7, you know? It's just a, a, a kind of a nice gesture when, when somebody plays uh, such a nice game against you. You don't resign, right? You just wait uh, to your opponent to checkmate you. Because here the point is, next move is king h6, and if black goes king h7, we got different options to finish the game, but I like this one. 
king queen g6. Now taking on g6 is actually not possible. Greetings from Tunisia. I played a really nice tournament there in the beautiful island of Germa. And then I'm going back in February if this pandemic allows it to do uh, to do commentary in English for the tournament. So king h8 and now queen h6, king g8. And now how do we finish the game? We feel like I said we take our monocle and our suit. You know, we take some caviar. Ah, Hossein, what's up, man? <laughs> Good to see you here. Yeah, yeah, of course. I joined you at some point. I remember in the live stream. Yeah, yeah. King f6, that's right, you know. Pretty amazing king. And then queen g7, no way to stop me on g7. Okay, guys, so one of my favorite uh, chess games, for sure, 100%. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. I think we learned some, some quite interesting things in the opening and in the middle game. And we saw some subtleties in the positions. So it's been a pleasure as usual. Uh, we just close this stream and then we'll open a new one in two minutes because we are going to analyze the game of the day from the US Championship between Wesley So and Jeffrey Shan. Again, that was extremely important because they were leading the tournament with 7 out of 8 before that game. So, yes, big hugs from Spain. Just take care and stay healthy, yeah? Bye-bye, guys.